Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today I just realized that July is my Wormiversary month. So I thought I would go along and interview people that are a part of my life that have been supporting me, um, and I don't know 100% what their thoughts are. I know that some of them were kind of taken aback when I said, hey, I have a ton of worms in my basement, sometimes in the living room, sometimes in the dining room. Uh, nobody comes over anymore. I don't, I don't know what that's about. But I thought I would do a interview with people that are involved and sort of get their take on the whole process from beginning to end. So this is my husband, Greg who has had the up close and personal experience of living with me and our worm babies, which he does not call worm I babies. I don't claim them. You don't claim them as worm babies. No. So, I have a list of, of questions. So, we've been together for approximately 20 years. And what years? Only Wormful years. Worm, worm. No, only one of them has been wormful years. Mm -hmm. Wormful. We'll figure that out, how to make that a worm word later. So, basically, um, when you and I got together, did you recycle? I don't remember. I recycled some, but not to the extent that was present when I found you. Okay, so you did do the normal recycling where you put things in a bag and take it to the place. Correct. Um, you didn't have a compost pile. Yes, I did. I had a compost pile for my garden. Oh, for the garden and for, for yard clippings or just let them lay? Uh, it was yard clippings and leaves that I left out there by my garden. Okay. I had almost a half acre garden that I planted every year and it was full of Beets and okra, and sweet corn, carrots, radishes, onions. So, did you ever take the stuff that you uh, made uh, meals out of and, and put it into the compost pile? Uh, no, because fortunately uh, we pretty much ate everything except for <laughs> the, the the cobs. Of course, the cobs were uh, always the first place to go was the trash bin. Okay, so so they just went in the regular garbage. They went to the regular garbage. Um, so did you know about uh, vermiculture when you met me? And I'm just going to look at you through the camera over here. You can see me, see you, see you, me. Because it feels awkward to keep going. Uh, okay, so had you heard of worm composting before? No. The closest worm farming, if you will, is when I was a junior in high school, my father and one of his co-workers would go out after a heavy spring rain and they would visit the golf courses and they would take the worms off the golf courses and then they started putting them in the refrigerator that beer beer fridges back then. Right. Mom would not allow them in the regular upstairs refrigerator. I bet she still wouldn't. And no, she still would not. She still would not. But uh, Dad had the, the bedding, it was preformed bedding. It was a, it looked like uh, used couch stuffing or whatever, you know. Like. Oh, so you bought it? Yeah, he bought it. It came in a bag and uh, it was specifically designed for the earthworms and then he would feed them like I think it was cornmeal no. and then they would go fishing and of course they would use the worms as they grew for their purpose of fishing. They'd put out bank lines or maybe run a trot line if we went camping. How big were the worms? Oh they were on average five six inches long. Would you say they're comparable to what the compost worms are? Uh, a bigger? lot bigger. A lot bigger, okay. Yeah, they're a lot bigger. Even bigger than the African nightcrawlers? Uh, 
Uh, Lengthwise, yes. Sizewise, maybe. They were longer. Mm, you're African. Yeah, is that I shouldn't have told you that. Are you happy you're not knowing that they're that long? Wow. I didn't realize they were that long, but they were a lot bigger around. Well, not all of them. Yeah, they, I agree. That, um, and the majority of them had a flat tail. Right. Those are the ones that live in a solitary burrow. Yes. Right. So you didn't know that there was any sort of worm composting going no, on? Well, they didn't go very well. It's, pretty new, it's a pretty new thing. Um, so when, I know that I have a lot of hobbies, but when I first uh, came up with the idea of having um, worm compost, because I always had a compost pile here, yep. and I always was pretty adamant about dragging everything out there that didn't con you know, contain meat or dairy or whatever, that it went out there, even if it was 20 below, and I know that you supported me even, even in that. Um, but when you found out that there was going to be worms in the house eating the um, food scraps, what did you think about that? Uh, that I'd already been exposed to, per se, with my dad. So I knew it was capable of growing worms inside the house. His was in the bottom of his beer, beer fridge. And unfortunately, in that aspect, uh, we had went fishing for a week and we had a power outage for three days and needless to say when we got back home his worm garden was pretty rancid oh yeah because there's uh, very few things that smell as bad as a bunch of dead worms oh yes um, and my mom made that point perfectly clear <laughs> and that is when he and his buddy Stan quit golf course into worms. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to ask her about that. So, um, so you, your dad had already had worms, you know, and when I said they're going to eat our garbage, what did you think about that? I thought, well, I was wondering what they would eat outside in the wild. And then when you explained to me that, you know, as it decomposes, the, the food source decomposes, there's bacteria and stuff that they feed off of, which uh, your return on investment would be the case. In. So, I mean, yeah, I, my uncle always told me that if we found a worm when we're out telling, to make sure that we put him in a row we already tilled so he wouldn't go back in the ground. So, you know, we also conserved worms that were in our garden. So you already knew they were good for the garden? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So did you just think it was about aeration, or did you think it was about the nutrients as well? I think it was both. It so was both. So there was a, an awareness in right. central Illinois. Not to the extent that we are right now. Uh, right, I mean, right in our now. own household. But, right. I mean, you did aware, you were aware that they were good. Did you know that, like, normal farm pesticides and stuff would kill them? Uh, no. Uh, when we were out on the farm, it was, you know, it was a different lifestyle. I mean, we didn't worry about worms in the garden, uh, you know, because growing up, uh, we had ponies, you know, and I had horses, and we would find worms and other creepy crawlies that we really didn't want in with the horses. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was like, ew, we got to clean these barn stalls, you know, and it was like, we took it out, and we put it in a big pile, and that's where it stayed. I mean, it, it decayed, and, you know... The horses didn't have to stand in it, which would be detrimental to their hooves. And uh, other than using it for that, I mean, that was pretty much the extent of it. Did you know that the ones that are generally found in horse manure are the red wigglers? No, I did not. I have now. You have but now. They, but they also had blowflies and. Yeah, there was yeah, other there bad was, stuff in there. Uh, yeah. The white wigglies that just make me, makes me seem cool. Yeah, the, well, 
what I had a friend that you couldn't say the word maggot, you would have to call them fly babies. <laughs> and she's Legless like... Legless flies. Yes, you have other words for them that we are not going to use on no. a family-friendly entertainment yes, channel. This is G-rated. Um, so it's been a year since I ordered my first worms from Uncle Jim, and uh, so that we've had started out with a 55-gallon drum, went to Walmart, got a couple of totes, and got, you know did the whole DIY big tote, and found out that the big totes were super heavy. Uh, went to shallower totes, which is actually the three-stack DIY one that I have now, still. It's only been a year, uh, but it feels like I've been doing it forever. So... We referenced a lot of information. We got gathered information off of YouTube. Uh, you know, we looked at specific articles and blogs. I mean, we went in pretty well prepared to know what we needed to do, and it was just the fact, well, we tried on our own what we thought we would best suit what we have as far as space and uh, capability of uh, uh, continuing the process with worm ranching, that's what I call it, worm ranching. Worm herders. We're worm herders. We're worm herders. Yeah. Yeah, I get on it. It's terrible. I can't find any saddles small enough for the worms, so That's I That's what they call the clotellum. Did you know that? I know. But there's no stirrups. There's or, no stirrups. Or, or so bridle. I can't the bridles ride them are and, terrible. You know, um, my horseback days are gone. So, how much in pounds would you say that this household has fed to the worms? in the year that we've been doing it? I think on a conservative... Just food, not outside stuff. I see. Okay. On a conservative note, just on household food items, upwards of, I would say, close to a ton. Well, you... you're wrong. Well, that's not the first time. It won't be the last, because you always <laughs> tell me that. Well, most people would have thought that an a empty nest household with just two individuals who are not vegetarians, they probably would not have guessed 2,200 pounds of food that we wasted. What did I say? What was my guess? You said a ton. And that is? 2,200 pounds. A ton is 2,000 pounds. Oh. I was off 200 pounds. Well, yes, okay, but the reality is that, um, so, that kind We're of... We're not being wasteful, it's just the fact, the idea that we get so busy, uh, her job entails a lot of travel, her job entails... That's why he doesn't eat his vegetables, and that is why the worms go hungry. They don't because go hungry. They never went hungry. The worms have never gone hungry, that's true. No. But uh, the reason that we didn't actually feed them a ton was because he didn't eat his vegetables when I'm out of town. That's why. But the reality of it is that our little compost green bin in the kitchen and its identical twin that I have at work hold about five pounds of scraps. Um, so aside from the current melon buffet that we've had recently for no reason whatsoever completely not related to the worms. They love melon. <laughs> yeah, they do. Just the rind, because that's all I'll eat them if I get a chance to get at it. That, that is true. 600 pounds. Wow. By my calculation, between work and here, it's 600 pounds of food that did not go to the landfill. They oh, so you're not going to count the leaves and all that, then? That, that's separate. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Oh, my mistake. If a man is, is right and no one's around, does it even count? Nope. So, the African night crawlers alone have eaten three 55-gallon barrels of shredded leaves this year. They've got one half of one barrel left, which what, so they've eaten like three and a half 55-gallon barrels of shredded leaves. Not just like you stuffed them in there, but they've gone through a shredder, um, 
compacted. Yeah, they. That was some work, uh, but it was totally worth it because otherwise they would have blown away and some other worm that I don't take care of, whose castings I don't get, would have eaten them, and that just won't do. Feed so the world, feed the worms. That's right. Save the world. Save the worms. So do you, do you know how much garbage in general that goes to the landfill? You know all the answers to these questions, but do you know how much garbage in the landfill is, is food waste that could have been eaten by worms? Probably 70% or more. There are certain things you're, worms you're just You're just killing, killing the whole sandbag thing I've got going on here. Of sandbagging? No, you're the opposite of sandbagging. Whatever the opposite of sandbagging is, uh, that's what you're doing. So no, 30% um, of all the stuff that goes in the landfill, even like couches and, you know, 25% of it is food. People food that could have gone and been composted. Uh. So... Statistics are what you want to make up. It's true. It is true. But the people that have mined landfills, you know, they find perfectly readable newspaper from the 1920s and they find, you know, recognizable items, you know, from almost a century ago. So, do you feel as though other people could do this? Do you feel as though that this is a lot of work? Looking at how much, I mean, yes, obviously I have a YouTube channel, so I'm putting more work into it than I would if I was not filming everything. That was not me that burped like that. Just in case you wanted to know what the noisy little creature is that keeps snorting and burping in the middle of the video. It's our little buddy yes. belly rubber. So, and put her where you can see her so that you don't think that the both of us are snorting and burping. So, um, aside from the work that it is that it takes to run a YouTube channel, do you think that the worm farming, like on a small scale for a family, do you think that that is too much to ask? In regards to what? Um, just like logistics, like a normal family of four or whatever vegetables, you know, instead of throwing them in the trash, to throw them in a worm bin. Well, you know, we're almost comparable to a family of four, considering what we bring home from work. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And the I mean, next door neighbors, coffee. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that have assisted. No, I mean, what I'm asking is other people out there in the world that are still throwing all of their stuff in the garbage, what would you say to them about compost piles or worm compost piles? And how much of, how much more effort does it take to do that from your standpoint? Compost or vermicompost, either one, is what, what do you think would be the best excuse for not doing it? Well, people's time is precious to them. So and if they want to do something, you know, today's young people, you know, they might have to work 12, 16 hours a day. I've yet to meet any. Well, I've known a few. So, I mean, I'm saying... Uh, how many people? I'm being a jerk now. But at any rate, what I'm trying to say is, is it too much to ask of an adult family? Okay, let's just call teenagers and young people who are still going to school and have a job. I, I'm not giving them a pass, but what I'm saying is that they're not self-aware. They're not aware of the planet. They're not aware of... No, they could care less. Right. A lot of them do. A lot of them do. Actually, we have an intern right now that was super surprised. Um, in fact, now the downstairs office people, I catch them in the air, in the elevator holding onto their banana peels, coming up for a meeting, bringing their banana peels or whatever to feed the worms. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that people are, I don't know if they're just humoring me or if they really want to make a difference, I can't tell. But, you know, a lot of people think worms are gross and they don't want to deal with it. And, you know, I will, you know, I... I go there and I play with my worms. I go and I look through them and I 
Um, time I could be spend rubbing bellies, I know. Oh, yeah, but, I shouldn't be telling you. But you, and, you and I are people of the earth. Right, and but we are is concerned it you, about. If you weren't videotaping it, how much time do you think it is? You know, to just throw all of your stuff in a bag and throw it in the freezer and then throw it in the, you know, that's like a few minutes a week that you would have to spend doing it and you would just have to remember to do it. Exactly. And so you have so many people forgetting about it and thinking, what was But is it too much to, is it too much to ask? Well, yeah, because people are, are like you said, they're, they're too set in their ways for one thing. If you look at our yard sometimes, and this is what is regrettable to me, as... Are you going down a rabbit hole? No, it's not a rabbit hole. The, the cardboard... Darn straight, it's not a rabbit hole. The cardboard alone from certain eating establishments, you know, are just flagrantly tossed in our yard. So we even pick that stuff up and put it in the compost. So it serves a dual purpose. A, we don't have trash in our yard. And B, the worm get the, the byproducts of somebody's laziness. Instead right. of going and either A, like you said, taking it home and composting it, or B, at least putting it in the garbage can. I mean, why not put it in a collectible place where people who do this kind of stuff would be able to have access to it? So you think that, I mean, because you remember when we were kids, you didn't take your stuff to the recycling. There wasn't really all the plastic there is now. No, but like with glass, you would take beer bottles and soda bottles and you'd take them back to the grocery store. Because you paid a deposit on them. Because you paid a deposit on them. And I remember as a kid loading up the back of the... Um, station wagon with all of the the Pepsi bottles and beer bottles and then you better just help her. Hello, Floyd. I knew you could do. There you go. Um, I remember doing that and it was kind of mandatory. Like I don't, I didn't know anybody that just threw the glass in the garbage. You know what I mean? I didn't. You didn't see that. I mean, there's other options now, but. You didn't see people throwing that away because they had to pay for it up front. Correct. And there was, uh, now in England and stuff, they actually have kind of like mandatory green bins outside their houses. Uh, you know, just there's your garbage, there's your recycling, and then there's your green bin. Mm -hmm. And it's mandatory. If you get caught putting stuff in the garbage that's not supposed to be in the garbage, you know, there's some sort of fine or something. I don't know what it is. But there's, there's places like that that... I guess almost legislate it, and you hate to have to legislate everybody's behavior, but do you think that's a solution? Just saying, okay, fine, you know, if everybody's not going to do it themselves, we're going to make it a law. Uh, because, I mean, you see that mountain of garbage, you know, I see it every, every day on my way to work. Right. That didn't used to be here 20 years ago when I moved in. Right. And when I go by now, you know, it's as tall as a 10-story building. Uh, it's like a two-humped camel over there that you can see over over the trees and over everything. And so... 20 years ago when she and I started seeing each other, there was no hump. Period. Yeah, no, that, that landfill has... It's a brand new landfill that they... Well, they just closed it. Well, they might have just closed it. Or they're, however, moving, they're moving it. Or they're yeah. Adding on to it, it used to else. be south of, well, well, well north of where we live now. There used to be a landfill, and that the hazardous waste one they closed. Well, this, ten years it ago. Was, no, it was still just a, it was still just a landfill, and at the time there were no regulations for car batteries or any of that, and so you had all that uh, refuse. Uh, tossed in there, and then, well, then they found out that it was polluting groundwater, and they decided to clean it up and then bury it with dirt and then vent it for the Well, night. yeah, I mean, they've got procedures and whatnot, but what do you think about making it mandatory? I think we have enough regulations right now. So, and you know me, I am not a... Make it incentive-based. If you do that, 
then people will. What would be the incentive? The like what, what is the incentive? I mean, right now, people recycle. Um, I mean, the price of garbage. I would say that when I first moved here, garbage cost me like garbage removal, just a regular household garbage removal was like twelve dollars every three months. Now um, it's about seventy. So you know it's it's obviously becoming more expensive for the the garbage companies to deal with the regulations. Regulations. And but so what I'm saying is so now I'm paying seventy when I was paying twelve and I'm fine with that because they have to do all the things they have to do to make it a legal dump, which you know we don't throw away that much garbage, but. We take our own recycling out to some place not there. They don't come get it for us. And of course then we take care of our kitchen waste and our yard waste ourselves. But, you know, looking at the people that you, you drive by their house and there's like 10 bags of garbage out there every single week and clearly there's something else they could be doing with that, but they're just unaware, uninformed, lazy. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. And but I what if it was mandatory? So you, you, you see, I mean, the next door neighbors, they recycle, they compost, they contribute to the worms. Um, right. You look at the, the neighbors two doors down, because there's, I think everybody that lives on our block is either empty nesters or, or something to that effect. And, you know, but even if we wanted to, we couldn't create that much garbage. On the same hand, we have a recycle center here. But you still have to load it up in the car and drive it over there. There was. However, it is. To me, it's counterproductive if you take your refuse and you drop it off at the recycling center, and there's no room in one of those dumpsters, and they just leave it sit on the ground. Yeah, people are, are jerks. But what if there was a bin next to your house? If there was a bin next to my house, why would I need one? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's it's like anything else. We try to buy uh, products that are recyclable. Sweetie. Yeah. And what we can't recycle, we put in the paper shredder, you know, like uh, you know, oatmeal. Cartons or something like that. You have to cut this off. This is getting more on than it should be. Well, I think you do tend to go on. Then the hamsters jump off the wheel. Whatever you create, more worms save the world. <laughs> okay, I was trying to keep this under a half hour, so um, we kind of carried on and on and. Uh, but that's how we roll. It is how we roll. We tend to go down rabbit holes, and I'm legislated against that here at home. So we do tend to have long discussions about lots of things. So here's an interview with my husband, who is a worm daddy. No? That's not, that doesn't sound good. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Have a good weekend, and I will see you later. Thank you for hanging out with my worm person. No, that doesn't sound good either. Um, thank you for hanging out with me and my worms. <laughs> Everybody have a good night.